Today we're performing an acid and base titration. Now if we remember, an acid and base titration involves the neutralization of hydrogen plus ions and hydroxide ions. Remember, an H plus ion combines with an OH minus ion to form a neutral solution, water. The principle behind an acid and base titration is as follows. We take a known volume, and in this case, sodium hydroxide, which has been standardized to a concentration of 0 0.45 molar. Now, this was earlier standardized using oxalic acid. Now, why do we have to standardize sodium hydroxide? Well, sodium hydroxide can and does absorb moisture and water from the air, thereby changing its volume and its concentration. So remember, if you're using it in a lab as a known concentration, remember to standardize. The purpose of today's lab is to find the concentration of hydrochloric acid of which we do not know. What we've done is we've taken a 10 mil sample of hydrochloric acid and we're going to react it with sodium hydroxide. Now the neat thing about this is as follows. We add phenolphthalein, an indicator. Now why do we need an indicator? Now we're just going to add about three drops. Well if you remember that phenolphthalein in the presence of hydroxide ions turns pink. So what we're going to do is follows. We're going to add sodium hydroxide into the HCl solution. Any hydroxide ion added will be neutralized by the H plus ion. At the equivalence point, all of the hydroxide ions will be neutralized by the H plus ion. After that point, the next added drop of sodium hydroxide, we should have an excess of hydroxide ions and the phenolphthalein indicator will show pink. We'll know this is the end of our titration. Then we'll record the final volume on the burette reading, and we will know the total volume of sodium hydroxide added. When we know the volume of hydroxide added, the sodium hydroxide, and the concentration of sodium hydroxide, we also know the volume of HCl. Using this information, we'll find the concentration of our unknown HCl. We're going to do two trials. Let's begin. Our starting volume on the burette reads 0 0.3 mils. We'll just write that down. Now what we'll do is we'll titrate. You'll notice we've placed a white piece of paper underneath. That just allows, allows us to see the color change more visibly. Now remember, we're adding dropwise until the solution turns and stays pink. Now we're just going to get it dropping really slowly. You'll notice the solution turns pink and it might be a little hard to see. We'll zoom in later, but remember we have to stir. So we're adding dropwise. Now remember there is no hurry. Remember to constantly stir. It's very important. We're down to about two and a half mils added.
remember to constantly stir. As we get closer to the equivalence point, you notice the color pink will take a little bit longer to disappear. Once it begins taking a little more time to disappear, we slow down the dropping of sodium hydroxide. This way we do not miss the equivalence point or the end point of the titration. I'll just lift the piece of paper so we get a nice white backdrop. We're at approximately 5 mils added. And notice the solution is still clear. we're waiting for the equivalence point, it's interesting to note that hydrochloric acid, HCl, contributes one proton. Sodium hydroxide contributes an OH minus ion. If we added approximately 10 mils of acid, if the concentration of HCl is similar to or close to the concentration of our sodium hydroxide, which is 0.45, we should add approximately 10 mils. Now, just to give it away a little bit, I know that the unknown concentration is somewhere from 0.3 to 0.6 molar. Now, knowing that, the volume added should be close or near to 10 mils. We're just coming up on seven mils added now. Remember paying attention, adding it dropwise. It's just, whoa. Now notice you gotta be really careful. You'd like to go dropwise. You do not want to overshoot. We're down to seven mils now. Now what we can do is we can spin it. And remember, we can shut it off using our left hand as we get closer. Paying attention. And notice now the color is disappearing, but it's taking a little bit more time. What that means is we're getting low on the H plus ion. There we go. We're getting close. Notice it's only going to take one drop to turn to the pink side. It's kind of like the Star Wars of chemistry. You're one drop away from the, well, instead of the dark side, the pink side, we'll call it. But remember, we don't want to overshoot this. You want to be as accurate and precise as possible. And you'll notice we've added one drop. Let's just take it out and show you that the solution has turned a bright and beautiful pink. Now what we do is we measure the volume added. So we notice the final volume is 9.3 mils. 9.3 mils. Therefore the volume used becomes 9.0 mills.
And that's the end of trial one. What we'll do is in a moment we'll begin trial two, but this time let's zoom in on the Erlenmeyer flask so we can see the color change. The starting volume for this titration was 9.30 mils, and we'll just continue on dropping. What I've already done is I've already pre-dropped just to save some time, but this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on the Erlenmeyer flask, and we'll do that now, just so we can see the color change. Now once again, we're gonna add sodium hydroxide drop-wise, nice and slowly, you don't want to add it too fast or you'll miss the end point and your volume added will not be correct. So now what we'll do is you'll notice we'll start adding it nice and slowly dropwise and stirring. Remember you really want to mix it because if you don't mix it, now it's taking a little bit of time just because I'm being very careful. You don't want to add too much. So notice it's going pink and watch what happens when I don't stir the pink color stays there, so I need to stir. Notice it's getting really close. It's very, and there you go. Notice we've reached that pink color. You'll notice the pink color. Now what you do now is we want to record the volume or the final volume reading. Now the final volume reading is 18.4 mils. You'll notice, and we'll just write that down, 18.4 mils. Now remember, the starting volume was 9.3. That gives us the volume used in trial two of 9.1 mils. Now the volume that you use in your calculations is going to be the average. So the first trial, was 9.0 mils. The second trial, 9.1 mils. I'd like you to take the average and use that volume when finding the concentration of the unknown acid. Now in the second half of the lab, what we'll be doing is we'll be finding the concentration of acetic acid, vinegar. But not only will we find the concentration, we're going to see if labels are correct. Now you'll notice I have a nice four liter container of pure white vinegar. Now what I'll get you to do is we're just going to zoom in here and we're going to zoom in on this label. Now you'll notice the label says, and it's right at the tip of my finger, it says 5% acetic acid by volume. Well in this next titration we're going to prove to see if this is true. Is it really 5% by volume or is it less? Government standards require that it's a minimum of 0.5%. So now we're going to use our titration method that we've done in this lab. We've also previously done this and we're going to use it in real life. Remember, you guys are always asking, well, why do we have to do this? Are we ever going to use it? Well, now we're using it. We're going to prove that vinegar is greater than or less than 0.5, or correction, 5% by volume. 